Hello everybody and welcome to the Game Warrior. My name is Jason and today we're going to learn how to play Flamecraft, the one to five player competitive game designed by Manny Vega with art by Sandra Tang and published by Cardboard Alchemy, which is their second game that they have published. Welcome to town. Artisan dragons are creative little crafters who spout specialized flames to help them create a variety of tasty or helpful goods. They are highly sought after by shopkeepers who hope to draw in and delight customers with their flame craft. You are a flame keeper, skilled in the art of conversing with dragons, placing them in their ideal homes and casting enchantments to entice them to produce wondrous things. Your reputation will grow as you aid the dragons and shopkeepers and the flame keeper with the greatest reputation will be known as the master of flame craft. So come join me at the table and let's learn to play. All right, everybody. First things first, this is the retail version of the game. So this is not the Kickstarter, which means it is the normal components. It's not the upgraded components. Second thing to say is this game is gorgeous. Oh my, they do a beautiful job. Sandra Tang's art is very, very, the word can only be said as cute. And I love it. I love it. Okay, so come into my house, come over to my kitchen table, come sit with me, and I am going to teach you how to play, and you're gonna play. You're gonna play your first game with me. That's how I learn, that's how I teach, so come on in and let's have some fun with Flamecraft. Okay, so get your game out, and the first thing you wanna do as you're watching is put this board out. In fact, I should kinda of pull these things off, shouldn't I? Put your board out. Put your board out like this and lay it out flat. And the first thing you've got to know is that we're gonna be playing around this board. And so how the game works is there are shops and you as a flame keeper are going to go visit those shops. So let me show you these cards right here. These are the shops. There is another kind of shop. It's right here. You can see the difference. You want to get these six with a little horn on them and they're lighter colored. These are your starting, starting shops. And you're gonna put them out around the town. Now let me show you how to do this. Just simple like this. Just put them around. Every other slot is how I do it. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna tell you that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they are, but I'd like to put them every other slot like that. Now, Find the smaller cards, just like this. See this? You'll also see another version of these. These are the dragons. What are you looking for? Obviously, you're gonna look for the light ones with the horn, and they are the starting, the starting dragons. There are six starting dragons. Let's take a look at them. There's the leaf eaters, the lettuce eaters. There's twig, there's wingnut, the iron eater. There's tannin, the potion maker. There's pan, the bread maker, and there's bright gem, the jam guy, diamond guy I call, and hickory, the meat eater, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put these dragons on the slots. And if you look at the slot, let me show you Draco Bell there, right? See that right there, that little horn? What does that tell you? This is a starting card with a starting slot. So this star comes with a starting dragon. It's as simple as that. So does Fragile Reptile. Pan is over at Critical Rolls. Get it? Critical Rolls, rolls of bread. Uh, they are so funny, so cute. Tannin goes over in Potable Potions. We have Wingnut at Smith Mart and Twig at Hello Nursery. The next thing you're gonna do is put out your tokens of supplies. These are the resources. There are six resources used in the game. You can see them in meat, diamonds, potions, iron, lettuce, leaves, and bread. Now I have these nice little uh, cases that I got from the dice tower, but you can use anything, including just putting them on the ground. There is a seventh one, and that is right here, gold coins. And we put those right on the fountain. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is build your shops. You always have 10 shops. So you're gonna go through all of the shops that they have in here. Make sure randomly that you have one of each of the main six, just like this, and you've done these randomly so they're different, and then you have 
four random of the extra ones, which are dragon ones, coin ones, and random ones. And so you're going to put those together, and you're going to shuffle them up, and they're going to go over here. All right, next, let's talk about these little creatures. These are your artisan dragons, and there are six types. Very simple. It's the gems, it's the meat, it's the potions, it's the bread, it's the leaves, and it's the iron. They're all the same. They're not the same in name. So what they do is they have a lot of creative fun names like flambe, flint, jewel, heart, cinnabon, potato, and so forth. But each dragon is actually the exact same power. And I'll talk to you about their powers later. But just to make the game very simple, all red dragons, meat eaters, have the same power. All iron dragons, the same power. So what you do is you get your artisan dragons out and you're gonna have a number of them based on the number of players, okay? So there's a full deck and if you have only two players, you'll, remember, you'll remove 12 dragons, two of each type from that. And if you have three players, you'll remove six dragons. It's just as simple as that. And those rules are on page four of the book. So you take your deck, you shuffle it up, and you put it over here, right there. You can see my space is a little cluttered over there. We'll get that out of the way right there. And that's where you put it. Now, the next thing you're going to do is get these dragons right here. And these are called fancy dragons. Okay. And there are two types of fancy dragons. And I want to show you these. Okay. There are moon fa fancy dragons and sun fancy dragons. The sun ones are items that you score as you go. So these fancy dragons are how you score extra points. They're not the main way you score points, but you're gonna have to pay attention to them because they can be a game difference maker. And the sun ones are ones you use once. For instance, this says pay the cost of an enchantment, score it, and leave it in the row. I'll explain that later on, but that is a way to get a instant bonus of points. But once you use it, you tap it and it's done one-time use. Now the moon fancy dragons are end game scoring situations. So at the very end of the game, the very end of the game, you get all things are done, you're pointed out, and then you get to add whatever this may be. For this, for instance, this says score two if you have three iron plus three points. So you get five if you have the most iron in the group. So these are end game scoring. Each one's different. And as you play the game, you'll get to know them. So it's simple. Shuffle up all of the fancy dragons. You don't have to remove any, no matter the player count. And place them right there. The symbol is the same, right next to the fountain of gold. Now, the next deck you're going to look at are called enchantments. Enchantments look like this. Or like this. There are two decks of enchantments two decks you just choose which one to play with it just adds variety to the game we'll start with the purple one and you give those a shuffle again just like the fancy dragons you use all of these and then you place them there and then you set out five of them for everyone to see and these are the ones that you will use there's one additional rule that I forgot, but let's just go back and tell you right now. This section here is the park, and it always holds five face-up artisan dragons. So whenever you get to pick a new dragon for your hand, you get to either choose from the top of the deck or pick one of the five face-up. Remember, all of them are the same in the sense that all green dragons have the same power. They just have fun different names. In the box, you'll see these cards with the paw print on them. They are a little additional card that you can use for expanded rules. I'll let you discover how to find those in the rules. We're not gonna use them in the base game. All right, now we're gonna do our players. We're gonna choose the red flame keeper and the purple flame keeper. You get this nice little basic card that will give you some information on how to play. Put it on the visit a shop side with that says gather and enchant so that we can go over that. Each person gets a figure. You'll also get a score marker that looks like that, and you'll put that at the zero place. It's also the 50 place, but zero and 50. You start with two fancy dragons each, and then you're gonna choose one to play with. Now, the first time you play this game, 
it, you might not know exactly which ones to pick. And that's normal for most games the first time you play. You're just not going to know the best scoring ones. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to give you a taste of it. Otherwise, you're going to accuse me of cheating later on in the game when I win using all of these fancy dragons. So here's a moon one, which means I use it at the end. It says I get plus one heart, which is the points, plus one victory point for each good I have of two or less at the game. So if I've used up all of my resources, I'm going to get some points. Now, the other one I can do is it says pay five green, five lettuce to gain three points on the chart and two gold. And I could use that once. So I have to make a decision. Which one do I want? I don't like the idea here of running out of resources. So I'm going to choose Greenhorn instead of Bubba. And then I just take Greenhorn here, I mean Bubba, and put him under the deck. You didn't see me do it, but that's what I did. All right, let's look at the Red Dragon's two cards. We've got Sparkle and Savannah. S Savannah, it turns out, is a Moon Dragon, which means she's going to score only at the end of the game. We gain one heart for every two Leafs Dragons, two Leaf Dragons like Twig here. See, did that show up? Oh, it didn't. There it is. See, Twig out on the board in town. Plus three if the green leaf dragons are the most. So that one could score me the mo quite a few points if I get a lot of green dragons out there. Now, the other one is Sparkle, which says, after enchanting, and I'll explain more about enchanting later, gain one heart per unique enchantment in town. And since there are six different types of enchantment... We talked to you about that, right? Because there's leaves, iron, bread, diamonds, meat, and potions. So there's six. The most this could score me is six points. I use it once, and then I would tap it, and it would be done. So we're going to go with the leaf one, okay? We're going to go with Savannah, and we're going to send Sparkle to the bottom of the deck. All right, all right, all right. Are you having fun yet? All right. That's awesome. So we're going to start with the red player. Oh, I forgot something. You don't want to forget this. Every player starts with three artisan dragons in their hand. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we'll play them face up so that you can see them. And that, not that you can see them right now in the video. I get it. I get it. But we're having fun, aren't we? Okay, so let's do the red dragon first. Okay, red player. You have three dragons in your hand. Now we have Savannah over there. We're not going to worry about her. She's not important now. She's only an end game scoring situation. We have Jewel Heart. We have Cinnabon and Flint, which is really saying we have a Diamond Dragon, we have a Bread Dragon, and we have an Iron Dragon. So now we are the Flame Keeper, and we have to play by putting our dragon out on a shop. All right. So we have an option here to go and visit a shop or we could enchant at that shop. You're never gonna enchant at the first because you need resources to enchant. Enchanting up here is how you get your points. That's the way you're gonna get your points. Gathering, on the other hand, is how you get resources. So it's simple, you send your flame keeper around, he gets resources, then later on you go back to a shop and you enchant that shop and you get points. Simple, right? This game is simple at its core. You visit, you go get resources, and then you spend them to enchant. You Yes, you also do have a few scoring options with the fancy dragons, but the game is pretty simple. So we have to start our character, Jewel Heart. So we have a diamond, a bread, and an iron. So how this works is pretty simple. You go and visit something and you collect, you collect the items that are there. So we're gonna go and visit Fragile reptile see that up there we're gonna go visit that you can see there that fragile reptile has two diamonds one from the dragon that's there bright gem and one is that it provides one by itself so we go there and we visit the shop first step we do and this is all explained on your card okay so it's step one is gain goods and so we gain what you're gonna gain two diamonds right now as you're doing this you also want to be considering something else. You want to be considering the enchantments, okay? Because it's the enchantments is the way you're going to get your points. So look at Wraith Rose. Wraith Rose here will is a lettuce 
enchantment. So that means it can only be enchanted on Hello Nursery. Only enchanted here, leaf and leaf. And it costs three diamonds, of which we just got two, two anvil and one potion, and gives us six points. So we might be thinking when we go and get our resources of what enchantments are out. Now, of course, everyone is competing for the same enchantment. So someone might steal the Wraith Rose right out from under you, but you can see other people's, uh, you can see other people's resources. So you can watch what they're doing and that might give you an opportunity to get there first. Okay, so the first step was what? Gather resources. Let's go back up here. You got your red dragon here and you gathered two two powerful diamonds. Now, the second thing you can do is place a dragon. So in this game, you take the dragons that you have in your hand, the artisan dragons, of which we started with three, and one of them which is a diamond dragon, and you can place them in the shop. In this way, the game builds and everyone adds to every shop. So the next person who comes and visits this will get two diamonds and whatever the other dragon provides. So while you're benefiting, so is everyone else as you build out the town. Now, if you fill all three slots, and you don't have to fill them in any order, by the way, when you fill all three slots, then you add another shop, shop from over there, and it just goes anywhere on the board. It doesn't matter where it goes. Okay, is everybody still with me? I hope you don't have any questions. If you do, I hope I answer them quickly. The first move we're going to make is to take that jewel dagon, and we have... a. If we look at the card, come look at it with me. It's a diamond or a leaf. So that means that slot needs a diamond dragon or a leaf dragon, okay? Either one will work. We don't have a leaf dragon, but we do have a diamond dragon right there. So we're gonna put that there. We place the dragon. Now the reward is to the right. And if you can see that symbol, that's a coin. So that means we get a wild coin, which is worth any one of those. Put that over there. So now we have two diamonds and a coin. By the way, just to be clear, you don't start with any goods when you start the game. You po, you don't have any, so that's okay. Now, the next step though, is you place the dragon and you may fire one of those dragons, which means you ignite them and get their benefit. You get their benefit. So, every diamond dragon has the exact same benefit, and that is gain three different goods. I like the diamond dragons because they help build my resources. But here's the thing, what three goods should I get? Again, pulling back here and looking at the chart up there, what would I get? I already have three diamonds, right? So I probably should get an anvil and a potion if I'm going to go this way. An anvil and a potion. And then what else should I get? Maybe another actual diamond because I have to get three different ones. And then I can use my gold coin as the potion. Oh, wait, look how smart I am. I have three diamonds. Two anvil, the gold counts as that two anvil, and a potion. So if I want, I can enchant on my next turn, Wraith Rose. Is that exciting how I did that already? That does. That gives me a little bit of excitement. It's one of the reasons I like the game. I like building resources and thinking ahead. Now, the final thing that we do on a shop is that we may use the shop ability if there is any. All of the starter shops don't have abilities. The new ones that we put over there, they will, but none of the starter ones do. So we skip that step and the red dragon's turn is over. All right, it's Purple's turn. Purple's turn. Now he can go, or she, doesn't matter, goes to any of these shops. Now the same thing is gonna happen. Wherever we go, we're gonna collect resources and have the opportunity to play a dragon, which lets us fire that dragon, which gives us more powers and then we can uh, use the shop's ability, but none of these shops have abilities. So what do we want? Looking out here at these enchantment cards, maybe we should think about what we want. And look at that one there. That one there is a six pointer, creme brulee. It has three leaves, two potions, and an anvil. So let's go get us some leaves. So we come over, uh-oh, got to get this camera working right. Let's get over to the Hello Nursery. But we've ran into a problem. While we can put our dragon here and collect the two leaves, we can't fire a dragon. Why? Because the center slot needs a bread dragon or a leaf dragon 
and the right slot needs a bread dragon. So what did we have? Remember, we have two, we have potato, flambe, and Roxanne, iron, and two meat. That doesn't do us much good. So maybe we should think of something different. So I think, come on over here with me. All right, I think I'm gonna come over to the critical roles. Get it? Critical roles, that's so funny. And I'm going to place my dragon here. What's the first thing that happens? I get two gold, two bread. Reach over there in front of the camera and get those. I get the two bread and I can place a dragon. The dragons need bread dragons or meat dragons. Well, I got meat. So let's put some flambe in the game. We put flambe there and guess what? I, it doesn't matter. You either need bread or meat to do that. Flambe can go there and guess what? He gets me a coin. So that's nice. That's always a good one to jump on in the early parts of the game. So you get yourself some supplies. All right. Now, the next thing is, is I can fire one of these dragons. Now, the jewels, if you remember, they gain three different goods. But these two have different powers. One is I can use Pan. And Pan will allow me to draw an artisan dragon. You're going to have to refill your decks eventually because you're going to use them up. So you could get from the top of the deck or you could go here and use one of those, right? And so what are we kind of shooting for over here? Uh, maybe meat and bread, but I don't see any meat ones up there. And I don't see any bread ones either. So I might have to shift gears. And, you know, I've already got an anvil. Maybe it's time to get a potion. If so if we use that, we could go get a potion. But let's look at flambe first. Flambe has a power as well. And remember, all red dragons have the exact same power. And you'll get to know these. Just keep playing with me. You'll have fun and you'll figure it out. It says, place a dragon in town. Now, what does that mean? That means you still have two cards in your hand and you could place it and fire it, which gives you extra abilities. So which one should we do? Okay, I just spoke a mistruth to you. I lied, but that's okay. I can, if I use Flambe's power... I can place a dragon in town. I get the reward for placing it, but I don't get to fire it. But that's okay. Let's look up at Draco Bell up there, right? Draco Bell has a space for meat and iron, either one, right? So let's go do the potato. Let's put potato up there. And what's the reward? Oh, yes. Give me that sweet, sweet money. So I get another gold coin, which is a wild. So that's really nice. Okay. Now, the final thing would be what? I would... Use the Critical Role's special shop ability. It doesn't have one. So guess what? My turn is over. All right. It's back to the red player's turn. So what is he going to do? So I think we're going to go enchant. So we'll show you how to enchant something. So we go and get our red piece, which was sitting there up at the Fragile Reptile. And we're going to go visit the Hello Nursery. So a rule you should know is that if someone else is already there, no one is this time, but I'm just telling you that if I'd gone over to Critical Roles, in order to visit a place that another player is already at, you have to give them, you have to give them a good, right? They got there first. And they'll let you in the door, you got to pay them. It's the way the game works. But we're not doing that. We're going to the Hello Nursery. And then come up here and look at me, look with me, up at that beautiful card. You see that beautiful card? Wraith Rose. So this is how it works. Remember, we have a card that tells us the two things that we can do. Let's back that out a little so you can see it. All right. We have Gather and Enchant. Gather and Enchant. This time we're going to Enchant. So we're going to choose this one and we're going to pay its ability, which um, its cost, which is three uh, diamonds, a potion, and a two anvil. And one of those anvil we're going to pay with a gold coin. Having paid with it, we take Wraith Rose and we now enchant Hello Nursery. So this is how this works. You just tuck it in under there. So immediately you may wonder if this shop now produces an extra leaf. Bingo! Yes, it does. So if someone else comes and visits here, they're going to get one, two, three leaves. And they'll get extras if there's more dragons later on. Now, so you've enchanted it, right? And that means, it, the other thing we should see is that it has these hearts on it. See that heart thing? In this case, it's six. So we take our little marker over here, this is the red dragon, and give him six points. Did you see that over there? Yep. And that is one of the main ways we get points. Then you're gonna refill the slot with the smelting pot, but you're not done. You're not done. You may then fire, which is ignite, 
any number of dragons there. Whoa. Now, in this case, there's only one, but we get to ignite it, which is nice. Sometimes you'll have three dragons there. You'll ignite them all, and you will just be, you know, you'll be dancing around going, I'm in the money, but not this time. This time, we only have one, and it's twig. Now, all green dragons have the same power. You may gift a good, one of your goods, to another player to gain two more points. Beautiful idea. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Can't. Why? Because we don't have any goods. So we can fire that ability. It doesn't do us any good. Isn't that sad? That's sad. Now, I want you to pay attention to the little leaf ability of gifting goods to other people. When you Later on in the game, you're going to have so many goods that it'll be very advantageous of you of doing that. So remember also that we have Savannah, our special thing, which gained one heart for every two leaf dragons in town. So far we have one, and we'll want to continue to build those up so that we get the scoring option later in the game. Okay, so this fellow, this red flame keeper, enchanted, and now his turn is over, and we're gonna go back to the purple player. All right, purple player. What do we do? We have two bread and two gold. Two bread and two gold. So let's look up here. What do we have up there? I like Joe Forgeman. Now these are special cards that have a meat and a bread and they work in pairs. So if you have one meat and one bread, it's worth zero points. If you have two meat and two bread, you have two points. If you have three, it's four points. But if you get up to four, so if you get four meat and four bread, that worth eight points. These are nice. These are sweet, in fact. I like these. But we don't have the meats right now. If we did two pairs, we'd only get two points because we've only got two bread and two gold. So why don't we go get some meat? Where's the meat? Let's see if we can go get some meat. So let's go up to Draco Bell. And this is going to work out for us really nicely. Let me show you why. So we're going to take our purple dragon and we're going to visit Draco Bell. Now what that does for us immediately gives us three bread, right? One, two, three, not bread, meat. Where's the meat? We're going to Arby's, right? So we get that. And now also we can add a dragon, and, but we need a metal dragon. We need an iron dragon. Guess what we have? Roxanne! Yep, we got some police Roxanne going right here. So Roxanne goes right there, and guess what she, what's the special ability? Can you see it there? It's uh, Let's see if you can see that little swirl. That little swirl is what? A fancy dragon. So we get to draw another fancy dragon, and we gained forest. And forest, let's take a look at forest so that you can just be fully in on this game with me here, okay? moving the camera around if you don't mind a little herky-jerky hopefully i should say there's some motion sickness in this video huh forest you get two heart if you have three leaves uh, at the end if you have three pieces of lettuce at the end plus three points if you have the most lettuce Woo! so we know we want to save some lettuce we also get to pay five lettuce to gain three points for a greenhorn later on so all of that is part of the game now Do you guys hear that? I don't know if you can hear the rumbling in the background. That's the garage door opening. My wife is home. Oh, that's exciting to see Jenny. You guys know Jenny from the top 50 list, right? Okay, so here we go. I get to fire one of these. Now, I don't know if we've talked about the red fired yet. They say you can place a dragon in town, which we did with potato last turn, right? Remember, we did do that. Well, I don't have any dragons, so I'm going to have to do this one. And Roxanne says, gain two goods. Two of one good from the shop or dragon here. So that means I can gain two meat or two iron. And I'm going to get meat. I'm going to get meat. And look now what I have. Come look at me. I have five meat, two bread, and this will be for bread. So that means next turn, I'll be ready to enchant Joe Forgeman. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We've got a good start here for both players, right out of the gate, doing well. Okay, back to the red player's turn. All right, all right, all right. We're back with the red player. He just enchanted the nursery with Wraith Rose. Now, what do you see right there? 
Well, we've got a couple dragons, so we could go uh, place a flint or cinnabon, but we have no, no stuff. Like, we got no stuff. Now, one thing we know, meaning no resources. One thing we can see up here is that purple is going to go get Joe Forgeman pretty quick. But what about this? Since those are the most uh, powerful ones, eight points, why don't we try and go get some potions and iron? So let's look around. Let's look around. What do we see? Well, we could come to Smith Mart right here, and that'll get us uh, a couple... That'll get us a couple iron, which is what we need. And look, it allows us to place an iron. And what's the reward? Gold. So that's what we want. So we're going to take our red guy, and we're going to hop over here to the Smith Mart, knock on the door, and we're going to get two iron to start with. Finally getting back into the game. We're going to place that. Now, one of the things that we can, we're going to get that gold and then we get to fire any one of these dragons here and they're both the same because they're iron, all irons are the same remember it says gain two of one good from shop here or dragon here so guess what we just got two more two more iron we are at the four that we're going to need up there for the mirror of truth and just like that our turn is over all right so now we're going to go to the purple player however I just noticed something. We made a mistake. And so I'm glad I made that mistake because it's a mistake that's easy to make and you may make it as well. Let me show you what that mistake is. What do you see up there at Draco Bell? You see the same thing I do. It's full, isn't it? So what we should have done when that was full at the end of the turn is go and grab an another shop and we turn it over and we can place it anywhere. And since the camera's here, I'm just going to put it right there. So there's the Savage Beat. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Let's bring it in close so you can see it. So it's an iron. It provides an iron. It doesn't have a starting dragon, so it has an iron or a potion here. And these three hearts mean if you place a dragon there, boom, you get three points. If you place a dragon there, two points. If you place a dragon there, what do you get? You get a fancy dragon. Remember that? Plus, remember when it says that line may use the shop ability if any this one says collect one good from each dragon in the park or fire all of one type one good from each dragon in the park oh my that's a good one that is a good power you're going to want to get over there okay so just so you know we forgot to do that now what were we going to do we were going to go do this enchantment right here weren't we we're going to do joe forgeman so we need to enchant a place that has that has an iron, because that's the only way you can enchant it. And there's two choices on the board. There is Smith Mart, where the red guy is, or there is the Savage Beast. And it really, in this case, doesn't matter. Except for, if we go to Smith Mart down here, because the red player's there, we'd have to pay him a good. And I don't want to pay him a good. I'm selfish, so I am going to go to the Savage Beat, and we're going to enchant. And what we're going to do is we're going to spend four meat, right? And there's two bread, right? And then we have the two gold, which are the other two bread. Just like that, we fulfill the full, the full uh, power of this enchantment. And so we take Joe Jorgensen. We put it up here, just like this, underneath. And we get us eight points. Woo! Just like that. We're in first place. Boom! Boom! Now, guess what else we get to do? We get to fire any number of dragons there. But guess what? Because we chose this one, we don't get to go... We don't have any dragons there, so we don't get to fire any of them. So, think about this. In retrospect, we made a mistake. What was the mistake we made? We should have gone here. We would have paid one red to... The red dragon, we would have had to pay to go there, but then we would have gained two of one good from here, two of one good. We would have gotten to fire both those dragons. We would have got four, four steel. And guess what? It would have cost one red. Up here, we get nothing, nothing. So we made a mistake. 
Oh, painful. But sometimes that's the way it goes in Flamecraft. All right, we're back to red. I should have given these guys names, shouldn't I have? So that we could, uh, instead of saying red and purple. So here's the deal. We were thinking, right, of trying to get four potions. But the problem with the potable potions is that we could take our red over there. We'd get two of the potions we need to fill the mirror of truth. But the problem is there's no place for a for Cinnabon here. For little Cinna bun, right? And so that's that's a worry. So we need a place that will take it. So Wraith, uh, the nursery will take it, but that'll get us too green. And you might ask yourself, what good does that do us right now? And that's a great question. Uh, there is red up there. If we wanted to pay one, we could go get two points. That doesn't sound too fun. And we could... Now, look, we could go over to the critical roles here. Come over and look with me. And that would get us two bread and a meat, but we wouldn't be able to place them. So do we need to place some kind of thing, right? That's the question, right? We still get to fire one of these, right? And so we could draw another one. So maybe we don't place one, right? And we just take that, and that would get us, look at this one up here. See that right there? I don't know if you can see it. It's the Dwarven Stout, right? That would give us the two bread, because we need three iron. So we could do that next time. That's a six-pointer. So, you know what? Executive decision time. Excuse me. Did you hear me burp? You're not supposed to burp online, but I did. Okay, I'm going to move over to Critical Roll. I get me two bread. I need to bread and I need a meat. Show me the meat. And I can't play Cinnabon. So I just hold on to him. And then I get to fire one of these. So I can place him somewhere in town. And that's an interesting one because look at this. Look at where we could. I didn't think about this. We could draw one or we could go over here and place him up at Joe Ferguson. And that'll get us two points. Is there any other place we could go? We could go here at the nursery, play some and get a gold. Let's do that. Gold's just too good, right? And there we go. Take a little pause there. We do that. We get us a gold. And hey, we're done. The red player is done. All right, it's purple time. Now purple has a piece of meat and no dragons to play so let's go get some dragons and what we'll do is we'll go from the savage beat over there and we'll come over here to hello nursery we're going to get three green not too shabby not too shabby and a bread we don't get to place a dragon because we don't have one but that's okay we're going to go draw one and let's ask ourselves do we want anything from the park right do we want everything from that park over there or should we just draw off the top and this is where you got to start thinking ahead of time, right? And maybe we want a potion because if we take the potion over to the potable potions, we'll get that gold. And that's not a bad idea. So we'll take lavender and our turn is over. Oh, wait. Yeah, we got to fire one of the dragons. Turn's over. All right. Thread turn. Now, I'm looking at what I have, and I really kind of want to get that Mirror of Truth, which is the eight-pointer, right? If I get this one, which I could buy right now, it's the six-pointer, and then I'd still have two gold. You know what? You know what? Let's do it. We're going to enchant. So, we're going to zoom out, and we're going to go over to Potable Potions. Uh, we're not firing because we're enchanting, so that means we don't get any goods. And we are going to spend three iron, a meat, and two bread to get the Dwarven Stout. I'm going to play it here. And then remember, we now get to fire all the dragons there. And so, oh, wait a minute. We get six points. So don't forget that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we get to do this. And this says swap with any dragon in town and fire it. That's nice. What do we want? What do we want in the future? If we're still going to go for here, we need some iron and some potions. Right? 
So I would say iron, potion, and something else, maybe meat. So let's go get one of these, uh, the, the, the crystal ones, right? Because those crystal ones give you three different goods. So we'll swap with that. Tannin goes to Fragile Reptile. Jewel Heart gives us, uh, let's see, we wanted an iron, we wanted a meat, and we wanted a potion. All right. So our turn is over. Okay, so that's about as far as I'm going to go in this tutorial. It's uh, how to play, and of course, it shows you a little of play through. I'll give you an idea. You're sitting at the table now, and if you were the red player or the purple player, you're like, you got this game already, right? You got it. You understand it. I should kind of move the camera over there. And, but I'm going to say to you, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. If you've got any op you know, opinions, thoughts, feelings, anything you want to share, tapa, 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 what games you're playing, how you feeling, say anything. I just love talking with people. This is a fun game. You can see how it gets going. It's a little cutesy, and I know some people have a problem with the cutesy. I don't. I just like the game that you're building these resources and getting these points and building these resources. And you'll see as it keeps going, you'll get more fancy dragons, and you'll start to generate quite a few things because the more powerful stores are going to come out and you're going to see a lot of stuff and you're going to gain a lot of resources and you're going to have so much you're actually going to hit the limit a couple times so anyways again any questions tapa tapa you ask me this is kind of a real fun game i've really enjoyed this video with you i hope it helped you and until next time this has been the game warrior jason at the game warrior and uh if you play this game let me know um what, what, how should I end this? I always have a stumble at the end of it. Until next time, this has been Jason from The Game Warrior. Let's try that. Until next time, this has been Jason from The Game Warrior. Have a great day. <laughs>